Hey everyone. How are you? How's it going today? So welcome to the Periscope. I'm actually going to be talking today about a topic that I absolutely love. Um, I did a webinar on this exact topic yesterday um, and I just because the webinar went so well and I had so much fun, I thought it'd be cool to do a Periscope version of it. So welcome. I am Jennifer Blanchard. I'm an author and a story coach. I work with serious emerging novelists who want to save time, cut years off their learning curve, and be more effective storytellers so that they can write kick-ass books and get published faster. And today I'm talking about the pro-writer mindset. So what it really takes to be um, that writer that you dream of being. And I'm going to go deep on things that you probably aren't um, even considering as part of what it takes to be a, a successful writer. But if you don't know these things and if you're not um, taking action on these things, it's very easy to fall into the trap of never getting where you want to go. So, um, like I said, this is a webinar I did yesterday, so I'm, I've got a lot of content to go through. Um, if you have questions as I'm talking, please feel free to put them in the chat box and I'll love to answer them for you. Um, and let's go. So today I'm going to tell you what it really takes to be a pro writer. I'm going to tell you the two mindset shifts that you have to make if you want to be a successful writer. And I'm going to talk you through the daily mindset practice that I do that helps me stay in that pro writer mindset on a regular basis. Uh, and just a little word of warning, I am going to go into some stuff that people might consider to be a little woo-woo, and so if you are somebody who doesn't like that stuff, or doesn't want to hear about that stuff, um, feel free to leave or to ignore it when you hear me talking about it. Um, but for me, this has been the biggest um, way that I have made what I want in my life happen. So a little bit about my story and how I got here. So I knew that I wanted to be a writer my entire life. Um, and I started taking that seriously when I was in middle school. I was 11 years old. I started writing. And um, when I was 13, I wrote my first novella. And I decided right then and there that I was going to be a professional novelist. And I was going to publish books and um, get lots of readers and all of that good stuff. And, you know, along that journey, I had a lot of breakdowns and I had a lot of challenges and struggles. And the thing that made the biggest difference for me, so, you know, this year I published my very first novel. It took me 18 years to get to this point and um, two years working on the same story. And really, it wasn't because I didn't have a good story or that I didn't have something that was worth publishing. Hi, how are you? Um, it was because I didn't have my mind in the game. So I was still thinking in such limited and negative ways that I wasn't taking the actions that I knew I needed to take to be successful. And when I finally got my mind in the right place, when I stopped listening to those limiting beliefs and all the, you know, bullshit things we tell ourselves that aren't really true, that's when things started to change for me. And I started to um, feel strongly that I knew I was meant to be an author and meant to be a novelist. And so I finally got my book out there. And I honestly don't think I could have done that without changing the way I think about things. And so that's really what I'm going to go into today in this Periscope because it's such an important thing for you to have your mind in the right place. And really, success is mostly a mindset thing. So, um, you know, I was stuck for 18 years because I hadn't done the inner work. So the inner work is the deep stuff that really causes transformation. So, you know, um, I was living under very limited, negative, old fashioned ways of thinking and especially thinking about being a writer. And so because of that, I was stuck. And, you know, maybe you can relate to some of this. So growing up, here is a short list of things I used to hear people say to me. I've heard, you know, people around me say um, things I was told, and maybe you relate to some of these. If if you hear me say something right now that you relate to, I would love for you to tap your screen and give me some hearts to show me that I'm not alone. Um, but growing up, these are some of the things that I heard about being a writer. Writers are poor. You can't make money from writing. Uh, being a novelist is not a career. Um, you know, starving artists. So that was a big one. People always talked about starving artists and how uh, creative people, you know, had to be struggling and starving and they would never make any money from their creative work. Um, you know, all writers struggle. I was told you can't make a living as a writer and most especially you can't make a living as a fiction writer. Anybody else? So I'm getting lots of hearts here. So yes, you're, you're relating to this. Exactly. So we're all told these things and I'm sure you heard other stuff. There was more things that I heard too. Um, these were just some of the bigger ones. But really, this is where stuck comes from. So it comes from these limited ways of thinking. 
And unfortunately, you know, we're taught these things at such a young age in our lives that we don't question it. You know, we just absorb it like a sponge and we just accept it. But the problem is, while that may have been okay for us when we were younger, when we were in our earlier years of life, because, you know, it kept us safe, it kept us from, you know, um, getting rejected or whatever. But the problem is now as adults, it's stopping us. It's keeping us stuck and it's, uh, you know, taking us away from what we want to achieve in our lives. And especially was doing that for me. So, you know, I was playing small. I was not getting my book out there, even though I knew I wanted to. And it was just because I had all these beliefs that I, you know, wasn't dealing with. But the problem is, if you want to be a professional writer, if you dream of being published, if you want to have staying power, and by that I mean, you know, um, writing more than one book, having several of them out there, um, getting a lot of readers, selling a lot of books, all of that, then you have to get your mind in the game. It has to be in the game or it will never work, period. And unfortunately, we're not taught this, but it is totally true. What you um, say about yourself, what you think about yourself, and what you believe about yourself is what you become. And I say that again, you are what you say you are, you are what you believe you are, and you are what you think you are. And so if you're telling yourself negative things, if you're telling yourself things that are not really true, you're holding yourself back from having what you want and from being that successful writer you've dreamed of being for so long. And so, you know, you're already writers, so you know words matter. You know, they matter. And especially, um, you know, they matter because they create things. But maybe you're not really paying attention to the words that you need to be. So the words that are going on in your head and the words that are coming out of your mouth. Those are really the words that matter the most because those are the words that are creating our lives. It's creating, you know, the actions you take. It's creating the way you think about yourself, the way you feel about yourself, all of that. And so you really have to change the way you talk and change the way you think because that's going to make the biggest change in your life. Now, the two mindset shifts you have to make if you want to become a pro writer are these. One, you have to go from considering yourself as a hobby writer to considering yourself to be a pro writer. And a pro writer does certain things, acts a certain way, you know, believes certain things. And then you also have to shift yourself from doing this for fun to doing it because I love it and I want to make a career out of doing something I love. And again, I will preface this by saying, this is not all, all about becoming, you know, a writer who makes a ton of money. I mean, if that's what you dream of, that's totally cool and, and that's perfect. But it's not about the money. It's not always about the money, but it has to be about that a little bit because that's what being pro is. It's getting paid for doing something. And so I'm not saying you have to shift your mindset to making money from writing because doing anything for money is always a waste of time. And, and really, it will just burn you out and you'll end up hating it. Uh, I speak from experience on this because I had seven years in a corporate career where I made a ton of money and I hated my life every day. So um, doing things for money is never worth it. But what I am saying is that you need to shift your mindset from thinking about your writing and yourself as a writer from, you know, doing this for fun or something that you do and really shift it to doing this with an end goal in mind. Because that's really what it is. You have an end goal in mind. You have something that you've been dreaming of. And it's different for everybody, but you have something you've dreamed of that you want to achieve with your writing. And again, it's different for everybody. Um, so to kind of just share what I dream, um, my ultimate writer's dream is to be a best-selling novelist. It's to have a huge catalog of books. It's to make a lot of freaking money so that I can prove wrong all the people who've told me in the past that you can't make money as a writer and you can't do this kind of a thing for a living. But it's also, you know, I, I dream of having my stories turned into movies. So again, the ultimate writer's dream. And I'm sure, you know, if you relate to this dream, tap your screen, give me some hearts. If you want to see that happen for your stories, you want to be a bestseller and you want to have movies made from your stories, um, you know, and maybe you don't. And that's cool too. The whole point here is that your end goal is your end goal and it's not going to be the same for anybody. It's going to be different. And so rather than, you know, telling yourself you have to have a certain end goal in mind, you know, maybe you don't care about being a best-selling novelist, you know, like maybe you just want to get tons of books out there so you can change people's lives with your stories. And so really that is how you decide, you know, the actions that you take. Because if you um, don't want to be a best-selling novelist, then rather than spending the energy and the time trying to make that happen, maybe you can just keep writing books. So maybe because you're not spending the time and energy on that, you can actually produce two books a year and, as opposed to one because you're not taking the time, you know, to do what it takes to become a bestseller. But again, it's all dependent on what your dream is. But 
just know this. No matter what your dream is, no matter what you want to do with your writing, you'll never get there if you think and believe the things you currently do. And I say that because so much of what we believe is subconscious, so we don't even know that it's there. It's just causing us to self-sabotage or procrastinate or be afraid or avoid doing the writing or, you know, you get halfway there and you stop and you never finish. All of that is just limiting beliefs that are holding you back and something that's programmed in you from, you know, a long time ago. So I'm better with examples and I think examples really illustrate things better. So um, let me give you an example. Uh, I wanted to be a published novelist for 18 years, you know, so I started this dream when I was 13 years old. I'm 32 now. And when I published my book, I was 31. Um, And every year for the last 18 years, January would come and I would tell myself, this is the year I make it happen. This is the year I'm going to publish my book. It's going to happen. And then all these years went by and it never happened. My old ways of thinking were stopping me from becoming the published novelist that I dreamed of being, that I knew I was meant to be. So I was telling myself things like, I'm not good enough. I'm not, um, she started, oh good, she just started writing her first novel. That's awesome. So I was telling myself I wasn't good enough. I didn't have what it takes. I was telling myself things like writers are poor, you know, and and all of these negative thoughts, they didn't motivate me to want to, you know, sit down and take action. They just made me feel awful, like all the time. And, you know, because you think these things, you're not going to take the actions that are required to, you know, get the outcome that you're looking for. But when I started to change the way I was thinking and when I started to tell myself different things, so, um, you know, rather than saying I wasn't good enough or I couldn't do this, I would change that to I can totally do this. I have everything that it takes to do this. And then I also, rather than believing those old-fashioned, you know, limiting beliefs about writers, I went and looked for examples to prove the opposite. So I went out and looked for writers who were making millions of dollars from their fiction. And I looked for writers who had had movies turned, you know, from their books. And I looked for people out there who were already doing what I wanted to do because that helped me to believe that it would be possible for me to do it too. And so, you know, I said to myself, if they can do it, so can I. And then that's true for you as well, you know, because really those authors that you love, the authors you see out there selling books and making lots of money and, you know, being bestsellers and whatever it is that you see authors doing that you want to do too, it's absolutely possible for you. They're the same as us. They started out the exact same way that we did, you know, feeling afraid, not knowing what to do, all of that. They just did one little thing differently. They went pro right here in their mind. That's all it was. That's the only difference. So a lot of times, a commonly held belief is that you have to um, see something in order to believe that it's possible. Um, And that is not really how it works. Really, you have to believe it, and especially you have to believe it about yourself before you'll see it happen in your own life. So if you don't believe that it's possible to achieve your dream, whatever your writing dream may be, it's not going to happen because you have to believe it to see it. And that was, you know, for me, if I didn't believe that it was possible to be a best-selling novelist, then I would never have taken the actions to start moving in that direction. And I'm not a best-selling novelist right now, but I know I will be because it's a dream I have and I know it's possible. And so I know eventually it will happen because I'm willing to do the work now. Was I scared of being successful? Absolutely. I mean, who isn't? I think that that's probably, um, the funny thing is that I think we're more afraid of success than we are of failure because um, failure, it's easy to go, oh, well, it didn't work out, whatever, and blame it on something. But like when you're successful, it's it's different because you're afraid that like, you know, am I going to get people being mean to me now? Am I going to get haters? Are people going to criticize everything I do? And, you know, And that was something not just for me with being successful as a writer, but also um, being a story coach. So it's scary to, you know, run a business and to do what you love and and to go out there and tell people about it because, you know, when you're successful, you get this whole new level of people seeing you, you know, you're visible. And of course that attracts haters and and people who want to criticize you. And, you know, all the time people will tell me I do things wrong or, oh, you spelled that wrong. And it's like, you know what? It's okay. No one's ever going to be perfect. And, you know, success is, is ours if we want it, but you have to be ready for it. And you have to prepare yourself to know that certain things are going to come with it and it's totally okay. And I'm going to get into a little bit more of how you can deal with that stuff, um, fears you have about, you know, being successful. So, yep, I'm going to get into that in a little bit. So, um, but again, if you don't believe it's possible to get whatever dream you have, it will never happen for you. So you have to believe that it's possible in order to make it happen. So maybe you do believe it's possible, but you're still not where you want to be. 
And that, again, could be any number of things holding you back. Fear we just talked about, doubt. Um, maybe you're distracted in some way or you're just disorganized. Um, maybe you're just making a lot of excuses. But you can fix all of these things, and especially the fear piece, by changing your mindset. So here's a couple more examples. This is where things get a little woo-woo, um, so stay with me. Um, but quantum physics has basically shown us that everything is energy and that thoughts have energetic frequencies, just like anything else. And it's also shown us that if you can imagine it in your mind and see it, you can have it show up in your reality. And I think that um, the, the easiest example to see of this is, you know, uh, Olympians or sports stars. Um, a lot of times they talk about in interviews, they'll say, you know, I ran my um, track and field event or whatever event they were doing in the Olympics. I ran it in my mind over and over again every single day and saw myself, you know, getting to the finish line and being the winner and, and all of that stuff. And because they visualized it so much in their heads, they made it happen in their life. And so applying these same physics to being a professional writer, if you believe it's possible to be a best-selling novelist and it's something that you want for yourself, you're going to be willing to step up and do whatever it takes to make it happen. So you'll study the craft of writing, you'll learn about storytelling principles, um, you might get professional help if you need it, you will get educated on marketing and selling books so that you know exactly what it takes to promote yourself to the level of a best-selling novelist. You'll do the work because you believe it's possible for you to get there. Now, if you don't believe it's possible, the opposite can also be true. If you don't believe it's possible to be a best-selling novelist, then you won't do what it takes. You know, you'll spend years rewriting the same story and never get anywhere. Uh, you'll make excuses for why you're not published yet. You know, you'll let life get in the way. You'll even create circumstances um, subconsciously, you know, that, that stop you from being successful or self-sabotage you from, you know, having what you want. And if you do manage to get your book out there, it won't become a bestseller because you won't believe that it will. And so you won't take the actions to market yourself and to, you know, get people to start reading it and, and all the things that are required of you to become this bestselling novelist. So there are really four steps that you need to take to start getting your mind in the right place to be this professional writer that you want to be. The very first step is to get clear on your desire. And I'm going to go deeper on all of these steps, but first I'm just going to share them with you as an overview. So the first one is to get clear on what you desire. The second one is to figure out what you currently believe or think relating to that desire. The third is removing and replacing the old thoughts and beliefs with new ones. And then taking action is step four. So number one, getting clear on your desire. I, I recommend writing this down, um, you know, in a journal or a notebook or something like that. But just what do you desire for your writing life? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Um, how do you want to see yourself? What do you imagine yourself being like when you reach that status that you want? So, for example, if you're imagining yourself as a best-selling novelist, you know, what does that look like for you? How does that change your life? You know, what is different because you've reached that goal? Get really clear on what you desire. And again, everybody's desires are going to be different and it's totally fine. Whatever you want is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And I will say just whatever you do, do not force yourself to want something that you don't really want. And I think a lot of times as writers, we fall into this trap because, you know, we write fiction. So automatically we think I have to write a novel because I'm a fiction writer. But the thing is, maybe you don't want to write a novel. Like writing a novel is a lot of work and not everybody has the patience or the time for it, you know. So rather than forcing yourself into being a novelist, if that's not really what you want, just find what you want. You know, what's your desire? Maybe you just want to write short stories or maybe you want to write flash fiction. Or maybe you want to do creative nonfiction. I mean, there's a lot of options out there. So don't force yourself to have a dream that you don't really have just because you think that's what writers do, you know? Because I think a lot of writers fall into that. You know, we just tell ourselves we have to do stuff like, I have to want to be a best-selling author or I have to want to have, you know, millions of readers. Maybe you don't want any of that stuff. It's totally cool if you don't. I mean, the thing is, it's what you want and that's what matters. Don't let other people's desires cloud yours because at the end of the day, you want to have the life that makes you happy and you're not going to be happy if you're chasing a dream that you don't really want. So number one, get clear on what you desire. Now number two, you have to figure out what you currently believe or think about this desire. So for example, if the desire is to be a best-selling novelist, you have to figure out all of these negative limiting thoughts you have about that goal. So you know, for example, you might write down things like, um, you know, I don't believe it's possible right now, or I think it's too hard, or, you know, other people can do it, but I can't. Whatever thoughts you have or beliefs you have coming up about this desire, write them down. 
you know, think about the negative thoughts you have, um, things you've been told by other people, uh, things you've heard or read in the media, whatever. Anything that comes up for you around that desire that isn't positive, write it down. And then once you have all of that written down, I like to get a piece of paper out and in step three, so removing and replacing, so you're going to take a piece of paper, divide it into two columns. On the left column, you're going to write um, all the old limiting or negative beliefs that you have about your desire. And then in the right column, you're going to go through and replace each statement with an upgraded version of it. So for example, if you had in the left column, it's not possible to become a best-selling novelist. In the right column, you would change that to tons of authors are bestsellers, including several whose books aren't as good as mine. So of course it's possible for me, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so you see what I'm saying. Change the belief from negative to positive. And again, the wording is going to be different for everybody. The way I like to do it is I will uh, work on the wording until it inspires me. So as I'm writing the wording out, if I'm not feeling inspired, I'll keep trying until I get wording that makes me feel like, yes, I can do this. This is a totally doable thing for me. And so again, the wording is different for everyone. Maybe for you, you can just change it to it's possible to be a best-selling novelist, and that's strong enough for you. For me, I like something a little bit more, which is why I said tons of authors are bestsellers, including several whose books aren't as good as mine, so I can do it too. And again, it's up to you. You can change the statement however you want. The idea is just to turn it into a positive as opposed to a negative. And then when you're done, cross that left column out completely because you're no longer thinking about that stuff. Those are old, and you are letting those all go. And now it's time to focus on the right column. So now that you're clear on what you desire and you know you, what your new beliefs are, you flipped all of your old statements, now it's time to start taking action. So this is when you start practicing or implementing these new ways of thinking and believing so that you can start having more of what you want. Because the whole point is when you start changing the way you think and changing the way you believe, you act differently automatically. You'll start taking different actions. You'll start doing things you weren't doing previously because now you believe something different. So for example, um, an action you could take is every day, first thing in the morning, you could read all of your new beliefs out loud to yourself. And that could just be something really simple that you do every day that will just help you get your mind in the game. Because the more you do something, the more it becomes a habit. And the other thing is a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. That's it. That's all it is. And so you can change it. And if you keep thinking new ones and different beliefs that are more positive and relating positively to what you want, you're going to have that happen for you because you believe it. So um, to kind of explain more of this, I thought I would explain my personal daily mindset practice that I do, and um, it's got four steps in it. So I do this every morning, first thing when I wake up, uh, and then this is how it goes. The first thing I do is morning pages. So morning pages are basically um, a stream of consciousness exercise. It was created by Julia Cameron, the author of The Artist's Way, and what you do is you grab a notebook. First thing when you wake up and you write three by hand stream of consciousness pages. So just write whatever pops in your head. You know, I'm pissed off. I don't want to get up this early. Why do I have to get up this early? You know, I don't want to do this today. I just want to go back to sleep, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you write, doesn't matter what it is. The whole idea is to just write for three pages. Now, this is really a clearing of the clutter exercise. So it seems like, you know, why would I want to bring attention to these negative things when I first wake up? But here's how it works. See, your subconscious, when you first wake up, is still um, sort of in that mode. And so whatever you do first is going to um, basically get that subconscious going. So um, you do the morning pages. It's going to clear out all the crap that gets in your way. So when I started doing morning pages, and I, I started doing them in 2008. Um, I started doing them regularly about three years ago, and I do them every day now. Um, but when I first started doing them, the thing that was most amazing to me was that I left my complaints on the page every day. So I would go through my day and I wouldn't complain as much or at all. And it just became um, much more positive. And then also my mind chatter was was a lot less. So I, I had less mind chatter. I didn't have as many negative thoughts coming up um, because I was getting them out on paper. And so morning pages is really great for clearing the clutter. Okay, so then after I do my morning pages, and again, I do this whole process while I'm still in bed. So I literally sit up, I grab my notebook, and I, I go right into it. So after that, I read belief statements. So I have a list of belief statements that apply to me and my goals that I have for myself. Um, I read them out loud and I listen to meditation music while I do this. And this is just for me to just get into that relaxing kind of like soothing mode. 
And I also, and this is a, a, a kind of a bonus tip, but I like to close my eyes when I read them. So I'll read it and then I'll close my eyes and say it out loud. And the reason I do this is because that helps me to really hear it and to take it in as opposed to just reading it on a piece of paper. So I'm, I'm looking at the words and that's great, but hearing myself say them to myself is a lot stronger and having my eyes closed while I do it helps me focus on the words so that I'm hearing them clearly and I'm taking them in better. So after I do that, I do um, five minutes of visualization. So this is when I use the power of imagination to create what I want. So I set a timer for five minutes and I just visualize whatever it is I'm trying to do. So I like to set goals for the month as opposed to like overall goals because for me, um, it's smaller steps happen to work better. So for example, let's say I wanted to sell 100 books this month. Okay, that's that's my goal. So in my visualization, I would imagine myself having sold 100 books already. Now, the key with visualizing is not to figure out how you're going to make something happen. I ignore the how completely. Visualization is all about the outcome. So focusing on the outcome. So if you already had achieved whatever it is you're trying to do, so let's say sell 100 books in a month, you imagine yourself having already done it. So what would it look like for you if you already sold 100 books? What would you be doing? What would you be um, saying? How would you be acting? And I like to imagine what I would do to celebrate achieving it. So for example, um, if I was doing 100 books, I would probably want to go out to dinner with my husband to celebrate the fact that I sold that many. And so in my visualization, I imagine myself going out to dinner with my husband and I imagine myself saying, I can't believe it. I sold a hundred books this month. This is incredible. And I just imagine what the dinner would be like. You know, I imagine what I would wear, um, what, what I would say. And I just really focus on feeling that outcome like I already have it. And then I do something called five minutes of listening. So this is more, again, into the woo-woo stuff, but um, it's really connecting with the power of the universe and the power of knowing that you have all the answers inside you already, and it's just a matter of connecting to that part of yourself. So I do five minutes of listening. I close my eyes, you know, and I just I just listen, and I ask the question. I say, whatever my goal is, so if it's 100 books to, for the month, I say, what, can, what actions can I take today to sell 100 books by the end of this month? And then I just listen and I just hear what comes through. Sometimes I will actually get an action that comes through. Like I might hear something like, um, you know, run a Facebook ad or, you know, um, set up a Goodreads account or whatever. Or sometimes I just hear messages like, you're doing awesome. Keep going. You can totally do this. I've got your back. Whatever. Everybody's different. For me, most of my inspired actions will come from during the day. So I, as I go through my day, I will just hear actions to take and I will take them. And that's how I guide my goals. So that's how I get what I want. That's how I achieve what I want. Um, and that's how I do it is by using this practice to really ground myself in what I want. Imagine that I already have it. And then just really listen for the actions that are going to help me get there. So, you know, it's super easy to just come up with a huge list of how you're going to do something, right? You, can, you could come up with a million ideas for how to do something. The problem is they may not be the right actions. And when you do this process and you have that mental connection to, you know, what you want, then you actually are going to get those inspired ideas that are going to help you move mountains, which is really what it takes to get what you want. So um, like, for example, when I was getting ready to publish my book, I would imagine myself having my book launch party. So I would imagine myself, you know, standing there holding my book. All my friends and family are there with me. Everybody's, you know, cheering me with champagne and we're all celebrating my book being out in the world. And I would just imagine that over and over and over again. And then I obviously took action. So you can't just imagine stuff and not take action. Obviously, you can't, you know, sit on your ass, imagine it, and have it happen. But if you take action inspired by what you're doing, you know, you'll get there faster. And then I like to repeat this process again at night. So I don't do the morning pages, but I do the belief statements, the five minutes of visualization, and the five minutes of listening. I do them, again, right before I go to bed, so I'll, I'll get in bed. Last thing I do before I go to sleep, I'll just do those quickly. And the reason I do, wait, let's see, because I sit at a computer all day, I like to do positive thinking while taking a walk. Yes, awesome. D that's great. Uh, did you have the champagne party? C yes, of course, Cindy. I um, had champagne at my book party. It was awesome. Um, I had enough for everybody in the whole room because that was my dream was to have everybody with a glass of champagne. And um, it was a great, it was just so much fun to be able to stand in front of all my friends and family with this glass of champagne and my book in my hand and say, I did it and I'm so grateful to have all of you here to celebrate with me and, and thank you so much for being there um, all these years as I've worked to get to this point. 
So yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. And the cool thing is that the more I visualize things in my head, the more they come out that way in real life. Like I'll actually find myself wearing the exact outfit I imagined and, and saying the exact thing I imagined myself saying. And then I go, oh, wow, I imagined that in my head forever. And now here it is happening. Um, and so that's really, for me, this has been the strongest and the best way that I've gotten my mind in the game and gotten, you know, exactly what I've wanted. So um, again, I'm not all the way there. I'm just really starting this journey now because I finally have a book published and I'm getting ready to write my second one. Um, but the difference is that now I know I can do it. I have the tools that I need to um, go and, and fight through the things that try to stop me. So for example, in the past, before I got my mind in the game, um, if I heard a negative fear come up, you know, if I had something like if I was working on my story and I heard something like, you suck, you can't do this, your story sucks, um, I would have let that stop me. So I would have put the book aside, I would have stopped working on it, um, you know, I probably would have self-sabotaged, procrastinated for a few weeks before I got back to working on it again. But see, now that my mind's in the game, that doesn't happen anymore. So I might still hear those thoughts come up, although honestly, it's pretty rare now. But if it does, I will just know right away. It's just fear talking. It's not real. And the only way it's real is if I buy into it. And so I just let the thought go and I flip it. And I actually did a Periscope on this yesterday about fear. You can check out the replay at catch.me slash Jennifer Blanchard. Um, but... I can uh, just kind of go into this one exercise right now, which is flipping the fear. So um, a lot of times when fears come up, if you deal with them right away, as opposed to letting your mind run off with them, you'll actually be able to flip them faster and get yourself back in the game. So if I hear a negative thought like, you suck, you can't do this, you know, you're not any good as a writer or whatever, I will immediately stop and I will just take a deep breath, you know, like, okay, take a deep breath, calm down. It's just a fear. It's not a big deal. And then I'll just tell myself the opposite. So I'll say, I am good. I, I can guess. I can totally do this. And like, even if you don't believe it at first, the more you tell yourself, you'll start to believe it. Because again, a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. And so if you just keep telling yourself good things and positive things, another confidence builder is being interviewed by the media. Yes, absolutely. So of course, if you um, get interviewed, that, that definitely makes you feel confident. Um, and actually, and I can tell you about the other exercise I talked about yesterday, but um, I like to do this one too, because I think this is probably the most powerful one, but it's called fears are false. And so the idea here is, you know, you have all these fears coming up, but they're not real and they're only real if you believe them. And so what you do is you just find ways to prove that they're not true. So for example, if I said, um, I can't do this, that was my fear coming up. I can't do this. Then I would automatically be able to prove that I can do this by looking for examples in my past. Like, well, I've published four books, so obviously I can do this. If I've done it once, I can do it again. Um, you know, I've written several stories. If I can do it once, I can do it again. And so you just look for ways to show yourself that you can do it or whatever your fear is. So if you're saying, you know, I suck, then you're going to find ways to show yourself that you don't, you know? So what have you done that you're proud of? What are you done that you are really good at that you've been successful? You know, what previous successes have you had that you can show yourself to remember that you are awesome and you can do this? Um, and I think it doesn't hurt to have, and this is a tip from one of my good friends, Jen Scalia, but she talks about a brag list. So just having a list of things that you love about yourself, things you've accomplished, um, things that make you feel really successful and then keeping that list close by. So when you are having those moments of fear or doubt, you can pull the list out and just read through it. And remember that you've come a long way and you can keep going. It's all a choice. And that's it. So um, I hope this was helpful. If anyone has any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box now. Um, this is a topic that I love so much, so I'll probably do more periscopes on it. But um, for today, I just wanted to kind of dive into the main things that it takes to get your mind in the game as far as mindset goes and being a professional writer. Because, you know, it takes a lot to, you know, get what you want, but 80 to 90% of it is in your mind and that's it. And if you can get there in your mind, you can take the actions to make it happen in reality easily. And, you know, while you might take time to get there, it will happen if you just keep practicing and you keep practicing. So for me, Having this practice that I do every day, oh, thank you so much, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, but having this practice that I do every day, and especially I've been doing it very consistently, twice a day for the last 52 days, and things have changed so much for me in such a short period of time, just in the way I feel and think. So like, 
before I would wake up in the morning and um, my first thought would be something negative. And now I'll wake up first thing in the morning and my first thought is usually something positive. And a lot of times it's one of my new belief statements. So it will just pop in my head, you know, you can do this or you're awesome or whatever it is. And so that's how I know it's working because I'm feeling better, I'm, I'm thinking differently, and I'm taking different actions. So like today, for example, I sent my book to a book critic. This was the first time, first one I've done so far because um, before I was afraid to kind of get it out there. But today I was like, you know what? I'm feeling great. I'm excited. And you know what? No matter what this book critic has to say, it's not going to make me feel bad. I'm not going to get torn down by it. I know that this is part of the process. I'm getting my book out there. There will be some negative reviews and that's totally fine. And so finally, I was ready to put myself out there and to get my book in front of somebody who can read it and potentially help me um, get more readers and, and hopefully they'll enjoy it. But the point is, uh, I don't think even six months ago I would have had the guts to do it. It's just now that my mind is in the game, I'm taking different actions because of it. So again, I hope this was helpful and thank you so much for joining me. I will be back on Friday with another Periscope. And if you want to get help with your story and getting your mind in the game so that you can publish your novel, I would love for you to check out a clarity call. You can go to jenniferblanchard.net slash clarity call and sign up for a free call to talk to me and we can see if we would be a good fit to work together. And here's the link for anyone who wants to see it, jenniferblanchard.net slash clarity call. Let's see. I interviewed a guy whose first novel was sent to a film agent and the book became a TV show. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, so it is absolutely possible. Whatever you dream of is absolutely possible. You just have to believe that it is. So please, whatever you do, just believe that your dreams are possible and do whatever it takes to work through those limiting negative beliefs because they're not serving you anymore. They may have served you at one point in your life, but they're not anymore. All they're doing now is keeping you stuck and stopping you from getting what you want. And you know what? Life's too short not to get what you want. So please, please work on your beliefs and just know that you can do this. I totally believe in you. And as soon as you believe in you, you're going to just do amazing things. So thanks for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.